Hello, and welcome to a very special installment of the 8-Minute Demo Video Series. Today we're going to be talking about Opalis and SharePoint, together at last. Yes, you heard me right. Thanks to Jeff Fanjoy, the creator of the SharePoint Integration Pack, recently uploaded the CodePlex, you're able to integrate solutions between Opalis and SharePoint. My name is Charles Joy. I'm a tech evangelist, Solutions Architecture. Today I'm very excited to introduce to you, maybe for the first time, the SharePoint integration pack that has been just released on CodePlex. So we're going to go over to CodePlex and we can see here, and you might not be able to see the URL there, but the URL is on the screen here and I'll put it in the actual blog as well. But we can see on CodePlex uh, Jeff Fanjoy has released an integration pack for Microsoft SharePoint and there's the actual OIP file and then a user guide. Some release notes that are included which we'll just cover off on what objects are actually included. I will be showing get list item and I will also be showing monitor list item and get list item as uh, part of this 8 minute demonstration. So let's get to it. Let's first take a look at how to connect to uh, SharePoint via the SharePoint integration pack and then we'll just do a quick get list item uh, test. So first you just go to Microsoft SharePoint. You'll see that I have one in here so we could uh, take a look at that. You give it a name and I gave it a name something specific because you identify the list name here. So I name it. I choose the type which is the only one available and then I fill in the blanks. So the URL the username, password, domain, the list name, and then of course the default pull monitor, uh, pull interval, and then the, the default items to return limit. So that's it. Once you uh, configure that, all of these SharePoint objects are live. So if we go ahead and do a get list item, identify that list. We can use the object filters. So if we go ahead and take a look at the different uh, fields that we have to filter on. I want everything, so I'm just going to pull back a uh, view all items. Finish. And then we'll just run it through the testing console. I have some data in this list for the demonstration. But we'll uh, clear that data out and uh, enter uh, that you in later in the demonstration. So you can see I have all this information that's been pulled from the list, who authored it, the uh, and then obviously information specific and generic from SharePoint. So there's a lots of information. But you know the title, the admin name, all that very good information that's coming from this list. So you can see all that information here has been translated and pulled in to Opalis here. And it's on the data bus. And as you know, once it's on the data bus, you can do anything you want with it. And we'll show you just in a couple seconds. So what we're going to do here is uh, get information from SQL, map it, because that SQL is presented as PM host alias and online one or zero and it'll be interpreted as negative one for uh, true so we'll have to take that into account in our map object so if it's negative one then it's yes if it's zero then it's no we're bringing it in from the query database object parsing it out and then we're going to be passing it into the SharePoint list object the create list object where we're getting title as the first field the online coming from the map and then the admin name coming from the second field and then we're going to hard code no for received Opalis training so we'll go ahead and show you the SharePoint list that we're populating you can imagine if I had to go through and add these new items individually online er, and here we go you now and if I had to go and edit them you know it just takes up a lot of time so online and then receive you know so what this is going to allow us to do is add all of the people that are left in SQL 
You can see all 125 rows we're going to be adding. That would take me I don't know how many minutes or maybe an hour to do manually. It's going to happen in seconds within Opalis. We're just going to go ahead and run this now. And there we go. You can see people are coming on in and received El Palace training is no and online is yes and we'll get some more online's no's as we get to the the end of this list here so we'll just keep refreshing this and we'll wait for a little while um, until they're fully populated and we could see here that we have an open listing here and it's not online so the logic is working properly from the map object so everything is going through just fine and getting right up there. We'll be up to 125 in no time. And with a quick refresh here, we'll get to see all the rest of them. You can see filtering through this entire list here. You can see that all the open ones say no and all the ones that have been assigned to a person say yes. That's just the logic that was built in. And we can see that up to uh, 125 have been entered. And we can also see that the workflow has completed and was successful. You can see all those entries there all automatically uh, taken care of which is very nice. And <laughs> It took, let's see, it did take seven minutes but seven minutes a lot faster and it happened automatically. I'm impressed with that. It was doing quite a bit. It was doing logic and then it was inserting data based on that logic. The next thing we're going to take a look at is monitoring for changes in that list and then executing workflows based on that. Since this list, now that it's set up, it, it and obviously saved me a bunch of time, is going to be used in case we remove someone. We would go in and edit. We would edit that item. We would take it offline, change this to open, and then uh, hit save, and then we want to monitor for those sorts of things. We can kick off a deprovisioning workflow. Likewise, if we go to the very end of the list, or, or we go to an open one like this one, and we want to provision someone, all we have to do is say it's online and give it a user alias, and whether or not they were received Opalis training, that's regardless, and then we can monitor for those changes, and we're going to uh, kick off a provisioning workflow. So we're going to get to that next. So as promised, what we're going to do next is take a look at uh, a workflow that monitors for changes in this list. And if I make changes in a specific way, because it could filter, it will uh, go ahead and initiate a workflow and take care of uh, actions that I want. For this particular use case, we're looking to kick off the provisioning workflows within my uh, SC demo environment. So my first object is to monitor list for provision requests. So let's open that one up. We have our same connection to SharePoint that we showed earlier. Uh, we're going to use the filter method of ob object filters. We only want updated items and the polling interval is going to be 30 seconds. Now when it says object filters, we go over to filters tab here and I have one here so we can look at it, but I could filter on any of the fields that are available being pulled back by the integration pack, but I want to only online equals yes. So if in that list the online field has a yes with an update, it will be triggered here. Based on that information, I'm going to pass the admin, as you can see we grab the admin from the monitor object to a PowerShell script that I have that will parse out domain and um, display name and things like that. From there I'm going to send an email using a uh, trigger workflow object which is taking in subject body and recipients and this is just the best practice that I've found is if I have to send notifications I like to create a workflow for that uh, notification and then trigger that with whatever subject body and recipients I want. For demonstration purposes, I'm using reporting recipients, which will go to me, so I'll be able to check my email and we'll be able to see the results. And then for subject, we're going to pass in this information, which obviously it'll be much smaller once everything gets resolved. But provisioning of whatever environment, so this is actually SC Demo, the title, which is remembered as the SC Demo machine name. 
I'm actually parsing on the word SE demo to grab just the number because that's the, the way that my set of workflows works. To be started for, and then the display name from the admin uh, query that I did from PowerShell, and then the domain, and then the actual alias. So you'll see what that looks like in the subject. And then the body, I just put some text together here that uh, made a little bit of sense. So note, SharePoint site, and then I'm parsing the SharePoint site from the server URL. List, and then I'm just grabbing the list name, has been updated with online equals yes. Because I could hard code this in the uh, notification because I know only those will be filtered through and sent through. I could have made that dynamic, but it really wasn't worth it. This will initiate the provisioning of, and then same sort of thing, and then of course from your friendly neighborhood of house action server. What we're going to see here when we start this up is it's just going to start up as usual, be running, and it's not going to do anything because it's just monitoring there in the background for specific criteria. So if we go over to SharePoint, choose a machine, happens to be the answer to the life of the universe and everything. Go ahead and edit this. Online, that's the important piece, and then obviously we want, we want to make it work. So we'll, we'll put my uh, alias in there. And I could just check that box. It doesn't matter because we're not doing anything with that information. Hit save. And then we can go into a palace. And in a matter of moments, this workflow will kick off. And I will get an email. Once I get the email, I'll open it up. And we can see it's been kicked off here. And we can see that it's complete. We can see that we got a successful return back. Oh, and there's the email. So let's take a look at that email. We sent it from the Opala server to me. Note SharePoint site SC demo list SC demo assignments has been updated online equals yes. This will initiate the provision of SC demo 42 for Charles, Joy, and then my domain and alias. That's pr pretty nice, but I would want it actually to initiate. So let's go ahead and, and stop this. All I would want to do then is simply I have a temporary file up here that I wanted to use, or object. So let's go back down. And to make this live, all I would have to do is paste the actual trigger provision process object in here, fill in the blanks just like I did before. So give me the title from here, and then the admin from here. And obviously, we have to parse that title, so I can easily just go grab that from here. And essentially, now, if I check this in and run it, the next time that someone flips one of those records to online, it'll go ahead and initiate the workflow get their domain and display information, send an email saying the provision will be started, and then trigger the process. The process looks like this, which is a series of workflows that you know create admin accounts on machines and create uh, SCOM notifications and uh, install the agent for SCOM. So, I mean, it's a pretty powerful process for provisioning, and this it will be initiated now from SharePoint. So it's a great way to abstract it. Likewise, I have a deep provision process that I could hook it into when something's taken offline. I can go ahead and trigger this deep provision process, all with just essentially one object and then just getting some uh, domain specific information. This one monitor list items object with some filters can get a lot of work done from SharePoint, which means they'll automatically be using SharePoint credentials and all that, and you can deal with the permissions on the list as necessary, but I think it's a fantastic method for initiating workflows from SharePoint to Opalis. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, video. It showed some very powerful uh, capabilities uh, that for Opalis to either insert information to SharePoint or use information from SharePoint to initiate other commands. Enjoy.